Hi, I'm Juliana, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the history of some Western wedding traditions. So when you hear the terms a white dress, the exchanging of rings, cutting the cake, tossing the bouquet, tying the knot, what are the, what's the first thing that you probably think of? You're the average American, you probably think wedding. According to TheKnot.com, America's leading wedding label, on average over 2 million couples marry every year in the United States. That's a lot of weddings. And in almost all of these, there are Western, the uniformity of Western wedding traditions being put into place. But where did these symbols and traditions come from? What made them into the traditional wedding that we think of today? So before I got married in January, before I tied the knot, I wanted to learn about some of the origins of these wedding symbols and rituals and sayings so I could better understand this sacred ceremony. Weddings are a beautiful occasion that are filled with familiar symbols that have really rich histories. For example, the white wedding dress. Now this is the traditional bridal clothing. Now I'm gonna talk about the symbolism of the color white first. In the ancient Greek culture, it was a symbol of joy and youth. In the ancient Roman culture, the color was symbolic of the marriage goddess, so called kind. And in the Christian culture, it is a symbol of purity. Anne of Brittany, when she got married to Louis XII in France in the late 15th century, was the first woman to ever wear a white gown for a once-in-a-lifetime occasion. But it wasn't until Queen Victoria wore her white wedding dress in 1840 that it really became a model for the traditional wedding. Up until then, women were just wearing their Sunday best clothing, something that was really multifunctional, because really white was a symbol of luxury. It was really impractical, it was hard to keep clean, and it was really only wealthy people who were wearing white as outer clothes, not just undergarments or uh, bloomers or things like that. It was really a symbol of status and wealth. The next uh, wedding symbol is the wedding ring. Now this is the oldest, most universal symbol of marriage. Um, according to the knock.com, 70% of US brides sport the diamond on their wedding ring. The symbol uh, of the circle out on a ring is a symbol of never ending love. And it's typically worn on the fourth finger of the left hand. And this is for a couple of reasons. In the ancient Egyptian culture, it was said that there is a nerve in your, in your ring finger that is connected directly to your heart. Also, in ancient Christian ceremonies, priests, before they would place the ring on the finger, would say the Holy Trinity. For example, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, and they would, the last finger that they touched, that's the, ring, the finger that the ring would be placed on. Now, King George I of England was the first to really start to break this tradition when he put his ring on his thumb after his ceremony, but this was also privy of the fashion of the time, sporting his exceptionally large ring and showing off a little bit of his wealth. Now, talking specifically about diamonds and wedding rings, in 1477, Mary of Burgundy, when she married Archduke Maximilian of Austria, was the first to ever be given a diamond ring as for an engagement proposal. Uh, so it was really, really rare for people to be given a proposal ring. It was mostly just the ring that was given for the wedding ceremony to prove marriage. But in the 19th century, with the discovery of South African diamond mines, this started to make diamonds a lot more accessible. It really spiked their popularity in Western culture. and that brought us to where we see diamonds today. So just as these well-known symbols have a really detailed history, there are a lot of wedding rituals also from many different cultures that we have adapted to bring more tradition into the wedding ceremony. For example, cutting the cake. In ancient days, grain was a big symbol of fertility. So in Becky Long's book, Something Old, Something New, it was said that in old weddings, a piece of, a, a loaf of bread would be broken over the bride in order to promote her fertility and say that she would have fruitful labors. This later um, 
this moved into a tradition of just sprinkling crumbs over the bride's head. It was a little bit less messy, and, um, it, but it still had the same luck factor. And this is also where the throwing of rice as the bride and the groom exit the ceremony is potentially originated from. This later moved into guests bringing their own buns for the wedding ceremony and piling them high on a plate. And if the bride and groom could kiss over the big pile of buns, it was said that they would then have many children. Later, um, this then moved into the French originating icing, which helped the buns stick together in a more um, in, a, in an easier fashion, which then led to the wedding cake that we see today. Now, the, um, the action of actually cutting the cake can be symbolic of starting new tasks in life together, but also in old traditions, it was symbolic of the breaking of the woman's maiden head. The next symbol that I want to talk about is the bouquet and garter toss. Now, this originates from an old British tradition called flinging the stocking, in which after the wedding ceremony happened, all the guests, now granted this wasn't a wedding that we think of today where there were 100, 200 people, it was normally just close friends and family, but they would rush the couple into the bedroom to consummate the marriage. The male guests would help remove the bride's stocking, the female guests would help remove the men's, the uh, groom's stocking, and then the guests would line up at the end of the bed and, you know, not facing them, and each take turns flinging the stockings, and the first man and the first woman to hit the bride and the groom would then be considered the first to marry. Now, this, you know, was, this kind of became not such a really pleasant game for the bride and the groom, so it then moved to the bride and the groom tossing their own stockings into the crowd to see who would be the first to marry. It became a lot easier, a lot safer, and it helped avoid the onslaught of guests in the bedroom. <laughs> um, the next, uh, so with interesting wedding rituals come interesting sayings. There are hundreds of sayings, such as tie the knot, the something old, something new saying, which have been coined to give greater variety to our wedding practices. For example, tie the knot. According to phrasefinder.com, tie the knot can be um, originated to a couple of different things. First, a knot in and of itself is a symbol of lasting unity, but also in old ritual weddings, um, beds were, like bed springs themselves were made of rope instead of actual metal springs. So when the bride and groom wanted to actually go and consummate the marriage, they would need to tie the ropes of the bed springs in order to be able to be a busy woman. <laughs> um, also in some pagan rituals, this is also still sometimes performed today, um, the bride and the groom will actually knot their hands together with rope, as you can kind of see in this picture. Um, the bride using her right hand and the groom using his left hand. So his right hand can be free to, you know, fend off any potential suitors. Um, so that's kind of where a tie the knot can come from. That would be something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue, and sometimes the additional a sixpence in the shoe. It um, comes from a couple of different things. It's mostly just symbolism and things that the bride can incorporate on her special day to bring a little bit extra life. The something old is symbolic of, you know, your ties to the past, but also continuity into your future. This is usually something like jewelry, a handkerchief, a Bible, something that's passed down through the generations. Something new is symbolic of hope and optimism for the future, and this is, this is typically seen in the bride's wedding gown. Something borrowed is symbolic of happiness and luck, and this is usually something that's given or that's borrowed from a happily married woman so you can kind of transfer some of that happiness into your marriage and this is usually seen in the bridal veil or jewelry something blue is symbolic of constancy and purity and fidelity and this is usually seen in the garter or jewelry something just have a little bling for the bride and then a sixpence in your shoe now this is sometimes left off of the phrase but if practiced, it is said that wealth will follow. Now, in today's years, we don't really have six pence, so you can do the penny substitute, and it's said to be really good luck if you find a penny from your birth year. 
Now, there are so many different aspects to wedding ceremonies, but the beauty of weddings today is that you can alter these traditional practices to really fit your individual personalities and ideas. You can really make weddings your own. You can stick with traditions, or you can break out of norms. So with this newfound, so this newfound knowledge of well-known wedding symbols, rituals, and sayings, I felt pretty well prepared to implement these long-standing traditions to create a long-lasting.